All right, we're going to talk about how to query a domain name server to get information from it. And you may be wondering why you need to know that. Because if you get a job as the network guy at a place, uh, eventually some, somebody's going to come tell you that the network's, the internet's down, and you're going to have to prove or disprove them. And one of the common things they try when they try to tell you the internet is down is they just basically type the domain name wrong, and uh, they can't go to the non-existent thing they didn't type. So you may be able to figure that out just by putting it in the browser, or you may have to interrogate the name server. And there's also other times when you need to interrogate the name server to troubleshoot your own issues where some people can get to your website or whatnot, things like that. So it's just a good skill to have to be able to communicate with a name server. So a couple different tools we can use from the command line to do such, such a name server interrogation. One of them is NSLOOKUP. Uh, Simplest way to use it is to put in NSLOOKUP and whatever domain name you want to get uh, an answer for. Uh, the default type of lookup is an A record. So here we look see that we got back a record for Google, which is 216.58.217.68. It asks my default name server. On Linux, the default name server is stored in etsyresolve.com. So if you want to know what, what name server you're looking at, that's where you need to go. If you want to change your name server, that's where you need to go. So uh, that was the simplest way. Another way you can do it is you can tell it to ask a different name server. In this case, I'm telling it to look up uh, google.com uh, at the name server 8.8.8.8, which that is a Google name server that pretty much everybody knows that you can use if you're trying to look something up on the internet. And I got a different answer. Wow, that's weird, right? No, it's not really that weird. Lots of times big companies have multiple endpoints for the same name. so. Uh, that's not that weird at all. So uh, that's the easiest interact, uh, non-interactive way to do it. You just run the command at the command line. NSLOOKUP also works in an interactive mode where if you type NSLOOKUP and hit enter, it puts you in this little interactive prompt where you can type stuff. So if we want to uh, get in here and do things, we can specify the server we want to use. We'll go ahead and say, uh, show me Google server. So now I'm asking Google server the question. And you can uh, do certain things like uh, there's certain types of queries you can you can do. Like I said before, the default is an A record, right? So that gave me back an A record for Google.com. But there's other types of records I might want to know. Like for example, I might want to know where I send mail to if I want to send mail to Google. So I do set type equals MX, which stands for Mail Exchanger Record, and I do Google.com and it will tell me the mail exchanger records. So there I see that if I want to send mail to Google, those are the records I need to use. For some reason, I might want to know the NS record uh, for Google. So I can uh, set type. You can't use the up arrows, set type equals NS. And I can do google.com and get back the NS records. So uh, basically, if you are querying for certain types of records, you can specify uh, the type when you do it. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Uh, another way you can do name server lookups is with dig. The syntax for dig is dig at, and then you put the name server you want to ask, and then you put the question you want to ask it. And that gave me the lookup for google.com. Let's look up the A record. Right, if you want to specify a different type of record, I believe you can just throw that on the end. So if I want to look up an MX record for Google.com, uh, that uh, gives me that information. You notice I deleted the www. Sometimes some types of records don't make sense for certain types, certain names. So I wouldn't expect to see an MX record for, for www.google.com because the MX and the NS records go along with the domain name and not a specific record within the domain name. So there's that. Uh, on the homework quiz, I'm planning on having you guys uh, go look up some, some different types of records. So you need to be familiar with how to specify the type. So another type of record that exists is a text record. And I've created a text record at my domain. And if you want to look up the text record, you need to specify text. If you don't specify the type of record and there's not an A record, it fails. So this, this is looked up at textrecord.learntosub.net and it looked up an A record, but there is no A record for that.
because it's a text record. So you need to specify the type of record sometimes to get what you want. So in this case, we actually looked up the text record and here's the text I have for that text record. It says, wow, text. So uh, sometimes you need to specify the type uh, if you want something other than an A record. So that is the basics of how you can do it at the command line. How about Windows? Well, Windows NSLOOKUP is the command for that. Learn to sub.net. Right. So then that gave us that answer. NSLOOKUP also has the interactive mode. It works very similarly, if not completely the same way in most cases. So there we go, we got Google's name server. So uh, that's how you can do NS lookups locally on your Windows and or Linux machines. There is no dig on Windows, sorry. Uh, another way you can look up records, and this is good to know, is, is DNS is a globally distributed database of records where you know I ask one server and it asks another server and that server asks another server until I eventually get an answer. So sometimes it's helpful if when you're looking up records, you go, and look up the records outside your organization. So say for example, if some website's not working for your organization, you might want to go and investigate whether or not you're even getting a domain name uh, entry outside your organization. So here's some website I found. I basically Googled DNS queries and this is called www.dnsqueries.com. Uh, so basically this is doing a query from outside of the organization. It's doing a query out on the internet. So this, this kind of isolates issues uh, that you might be having uh, from issues people, other people on the internet are having. So uh, it's good to sometimes go get a, a outside look at how things are looking uh, so that you can verify that, that things appear to be working the way they're supposed to be working. And I think that's all I wanted to say about querying DNS records.